Oh, no. Hi. Morning, <laughs> folks. Here we are. And it is Wednesday morning at 1030, July 14th. Hallelujah. And uh, it is good to have you with us today. And uh, just to let you know, we are also having a live Bible study at New Life in the Fellowship Hall. If you can join us for that, that's great. If you can't, uh, here we are coming to you through... Uh, live stream or pre-recorded this this program is pre-recorded but is being sent over facebook and uh, youtube and so we uh, just were reminiscing a little bit about when we first started down this road and we would zoom the camera a different camera all the way into the front of the stage and have to stay in a certain place and and uh, boy the lord has really blessed and helped us to to acquire um some equipment and uh, definitely a lot of understanding. Uh, I'm glad that Pastor David loves that kind of stuff because I'm not that kind of person to get in all the real detailed stuff. I, I like playing with the toys, but I don't, I don't want to really get into the, all of the detail stuff. And so thank you, Lord, that Pastor David has the mind, presence of mind to get into the detail stuff. When we first started down this road a year and a half ago, maybe something like that, um, we listened to a, a training session, and it and it just we were able to use the equipment we had. I think we spent thirty bucks for a twenty five thirty bucks for a, a tripod, and that was about it. Maybe a couple of cords, and we were able to get things up and running. And I have talked to other pastors, and they're kind of the same place, saying, "Man, we've learned a lot over the last year and a half, two years." And so here we are, and hopefully you're having a good day in the Lord. Um, I was thinking of a song that Don and I sometimes sing as we're driving up the road to the church, and it's a happy day, and I thank God for the weather, and uh, just um, living it for my Lord by the promises in God's Word, and uh, you know, there's there's so much going for us as God's children, so many wonderful things, and we're going to be continuing our study in First uh, Peter chapter 3. We're kind of wrapping up the, the end of chapter three, and we're going to go into hopefully chapter four today and uh, do some talking and some sharing. And, uh, you know, I was going to check, do you have any thoughts there, my love? <laughs> Not about that, but this morning when we woke up, <clears throat> um, Harry's, he tends to do it a lot. He, he says about <clears throat> new mercies in the morning. And we learned a song that was with the, I guess the King James Version, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. And so I was looking up the scripture and it's in Lamentations 3, 21 and 22. It says, the reason I can still find hope is that I keep this one thing in mind. And then it's 22 and 23. The Lord's mercy, we were not completely wiped out. His compassion is never limited. It is new every morning. His faithfulness is great. And so... Um, and and the just to slip this in, the writer of that book was Jeremiah, and he was considered the weeping prophet <laughs> because he, he was in a time when uh, he warned Judah of the impending doom if they did not repent. And that was to be captured. The city was going to be seized. And uh, he tried in the worst way. He he went through a lot of jostling around. He ended up in a muddy cistern up to his knees in mud and left there and, and uh, you know, fed bread and water and just terrible times. And, and when he wrote things, he wrote from the perspective of repent and why are you doing this? And God is judging us. And and yet, in the middle of that lamentation, the book lamentation, which really is, is a is a word of, of um, crying out, lamenting, the situation. There's that promise in there. Read it again. The Lord's mercy, we were not completely wiped out. His compassion is never limited. It is new every morning. His faithfulness is great. Amen. So the thing that. <clears throat> The word that I got from the Lord through that is for somebody today that his mercies are new for you right now. Amen. He has new grace for this day. And um, whatever the situation is, whatever you're 
going through. He has his strength for you. He has his abilities to walk through the moments and the times that are going on right now. And he wants to release it to you, but you, you need to connect with him. Amen. That's the only way that we can get through the day is staying connected to him. Mm -hmm. And even when we don't feel him, I was having a talk with one of my sons last night about deep faith or shallow faith. And uh, deep faith is always combined with a work of patience and realizing that God's on the throne even when we don't feel like it. And uh, Peter, who is writing this letter to the church, is trying to encourage the church about standing fast, remaining firm, trusting God, even when it's hard to feel that. And uh, that's what we're studying, is that the trials, the things we go through, there's purpose in it. There's, there's a reason that we go through this. And <clears throat> I so appreciate the Lord's uh, presence and his purposing. Sometimes when I don't see it, um, I have to wait. And God reveals his purpose in everything we walk through to the point where you go, oh, that's what that was all about. You know, time and time again, we're told to wait. And that's hard because we want it right now. And we live in an instant society that has instant gratification. And <clears throat> God um, wants us to wait because he wants to show up in whatever we're going through. And sometimes we jump the gun and we just kind of, well, I'm going to do it because you're not here, God. You know, like um, King Saul did with the, uh, when he did the, the sacrifices. Sacrifice. Yeah. <clears throat> because Samuel, Samuel didn't, wasn't there. Right. But God's wanting to give us the best. And if we push through, we get good enough, but mm -hmm. we don't get the best. And so yeah. we need to, be willing to die to ourselves, deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him <clears throat> and allow him to um, bring his way into our situation. You know, this is this is what this time has been is is for us to learn his way and not our own ways. Mm -hmm. And that can only happen as we do it his way, <laughs> which he says to wait. So. Yeah, the, the kingdom of God wants to produce in us the fruit of faith. And that faith, the Bible says, is more precious than the trying of gold. And it, the connotation there is that it's not an easy faith. It's, it's a faith that God works into our life, and it's very productive. Um, but it's also something that comes at a cost, so to speak. And, and that is his... Uh, I, I so love this cornerstone verse in my life, and that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with your whole heart. Don't lean on your own understanding, but on all, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And and to me, that's that's like a cornerstone scripture for the church is, is that's how we have to live. It's, we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, what a wonderful hope we have that in everything we walk through, we can go, God, you're the great redeemer. You will redeem this situation and use it for my good. That's what Romans 8, 28 says. Paul, who spent many, many days, many years in prison and uh, suffering and the things he went through, he's the one that proclaims all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things. And I'm sure there were times that he had to remind himself, yep, even this, God, I may be chained to a wall. I might I might have terrible food that I can barely get enough of. And, and my best friends right now are the rats that are in the prison cell. But all things, even this, God, works together for my good and, and the good of your kingdom. And what a wonderful hope we have as God moves us more and more into that mindset. Hallelujah. Well, um, shall we get into this study? You got anything else you wanted to share? Uh, I was just <clears throat> wanting to, <clears throat> I guess, round it out with um, the acknowledge him, you know, and, and that's one thing we, we um, kind of skim over. It's, it's like, yeah, I'll trust in you with all my heart and won't, 
I won't be thinking about what I need to do in this. Uh, uh, and the acknowledging him, I, I thought, why did they put acknowledge him in there? And, um, you know, that's really tied with he is there. He is with us. Mm -hmm. And so when you acknowledge him, you, you, you bring him into the situation and you say, okay, God, you really are here with me. So mm -hmm. now I need to, um, I, I need to experience this moment with you. I need to experience what you have for me in this, whether it be strength, whether it be a, um, a shot of hope, whether it be um, peace, um, experiencing your love. Um, I'm acknowledging that you're here and so your names are here and so that you're going to bring your names into my situation. You are my God who is my peace. You are my God who is my shepherd. You are my protection. You are my shield. You are my um, God that is there. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so that's acknowledging him. That's seeing that, yeah, God is in this with us and he is going to fight for us and he is going to bring his, but we need to wait and listen for the, the, the voice of the Lord. And, you know, that was the very thing that I see happening and dealing with um, things that are going on in our family and with the kids. And um, from the beginning when COVID started and from <clears throat> When I really started to dig in with the Lord, it all had to do with hearing his voice. Mm -hmm. If I didn't recognize his voice, if I didn't know it was him that was saying it, you know, I spun out and I went off on these other directions that God didn't want me to go into because I didn't really know his voice. And he said, this has been a time of me developing in you, fine tuning in you, um, getting you right you know when he aligns us with him he's 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 tuned our our hearts and our minds to his spirit so that we are allowing his spirit to really speak to us and not shutting him off we're acknowledging him okay god you're here and i i i will stop and i will um calm <laughs> i will let myself be brought into your peace <clears throat> so kind of that, that scripture, can, be still and know that I'm yeah. God. Mm -hmm. and, and this is all part of knowing him. Knowing him is knowing his voice, mm -hmm. knowing that it is God with us, knowing his presence, knowing who he is. And so, and knowing his and, ways and knowing how he speaks to us. You and know? also being able to stand firm against the enemy's attacks of doubt and speculation. So then we, we should be, we should yeah. have, which I did mm -hmm. this morning is put mm -hmm. on the armor. Yeah. You know, this is not a, this is not a, optional thing it's mm -hmm. not a you know he's he said he told me he says i've said to you in my word to do these things why are you just hearing them and not doing them and i went okay he says yeah you just i said rejoice i said don't worry why are you doing these other things yeah. and not listening to my word you're hearing it but you're not listening to it you're not doing it you're letting it kind of go in one ear and out the other and oh yeah that's i i I can do that if I want to. I don't have to do this. No, these are life-changing principles that God is speaking to us. And he's not saying it just because he's God and he's the ruler. It, th that's not the whole purpose in this. The whole purpose is because he has the best in store for us. And he wants to, us to hear his heart and start operating in his ways and, and so we hear it through the word, we hear it through Bible study, we hear it through different people that share with us during the day or, or, or come and speak a word that is really from the Lord. But we have to know it's from the Lord. We have to know it's his voice. And he said, this is what is the foundational basis of everything. It, you've, uh, you've accepted Jesus. And because you've accepted Jesus and allowed him to come into your heart, into your spirit, and you've allowed the, the spirit to come in, <clears throat> in that process, I am changing you. And so now you can hear the spirit. You know, you it's have been opened up to my, my voice to yeah. who I am, but you need to know it's my voice and not the enemies and not yourself, not the world's, not somebody's opinion. Not, I'm trying to bring discernment and and uh, uh, um, fine tuning so you hear my uh, frequency, frequency that I'm on, 
the frequency of the spirit. You need to hear the frequency of the spirit. And it, it is it's so drowned out by the world. It's so drowned out by yourself and your thinking. And it's so drowned out by the enemy. And, and so this is how I'm fine tuning you because I want you to know me. That's all part of knowing him. We know his voice. I know Harry's voice. I can, I can tell it from wherever because I know him and I know his voice. And that's what God is trying to get us into now to hear his voice in the word, in the Bible study. Hear his voice when somebody speaks to us a word from the Lord. Hear his voice when he may speak to us through a song. He may speak to us through our children. He may speak to us many, many different ways. And he wants us to know that it's him. And so in, in fine tuning us, he's getting us spirit frequenced. <laughs> putting us in his frequency. So we are moving and operating in that. And so then we will wait when he says to wait. <laughs> we won't rush into something. We will take time to to um, allow his spirit to come in and calm us and bring his peace and his love and his grace for the moment and his, his um, ability to bust through what the enemy has done and break down the things that are happening. So yes, this is this Bible study is part of that, but you need to know it's his voice mm -hmm. that is coming through. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, going back to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and 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 that was good, Don. It really was. And sometimes I just have to step out of the way because I just need to let her let her go. <laughs> and that's good because you hear from the Lord. I know you do. Um, but in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, in verse 6, it says and in all your ways acknowledge him. The word acknowledge there is a worship word, which is yada, and it means to know. And uh, when we, in all of our ways, as we walk, what we do is we want to know God in, in that way. So as we're walking and uh, we're not doing our own thing, but we're, we're trusting the Lord with our whole heart and uh, we're not leaning on our own understanding, but acknowledging him, what we're doing is we're we're worshiping him in every place that we walk. We we can walk through it and go, man, this this path is rocky and hard and 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 da 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 da. And we can we can kind of think that way, you know, about our spiritual walk, or we can acknowledge God and we can we can allow Him to help us to to lift up a voice of of worship that to know Him. God, thank you for this path that I'm on. Thank you, Lord, that it's not a wilderness, that spiritually I've got to take out a, a machete and whack my way through. It's it, There's a path. There's a path you're leading me on, a path of righteousness. And you're helping me to walk in this. And I worship you. I thank you for for having me on this path. I thank you for this. And, and that word acknowledge means so much more than just, yeah, yeah, okay, God, yep, thank you. It's, 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 it's allowing our hearts to find praiseworthy things in honoring and worshiping him as he directs our path. We we can say, Lord, whew, thank you, Lord, that I didn't go my way or I didn't do this thing. I, I heard your voice and I and I decided to walk in your way and not in my own way. And, and uh, Don and I have over the years um, many times worshiped the Lord, maybe not singing a song or closing our eyes and raising our arms, but just in our in, in our expression of God, you are so good how you've led us to this point in our life. As we look back, we see all of these things that you have done for us, and they're beyond what we could ever consider. They're, they're so much better, and, and, and so we are able to look at points of, of um, commitment to him, places where we we had to say, not my will, but thy will be done. And, and maybe it was a hard decision. But as we made the hard decision, we began to see the fruit of that, the, the deep faith that God gives to us as we walk on this journey with him. And so as you acknowledge him. Know him. <laughs> let it, yeah, and that's literally what the word no means. Know is in there. To know him. In the middle and, of it. And so as we, as we allow him to direct our path, we, we worship him. We invite him into our 
journey by saying, God, thank you for this pathway you have us on. Thank you that you're with us and you know everything about me and you know exactly what I need and you're helping me to grow. And and as we acknowledge him, as we as we know him in that position, that spot that we're in, God receives from us a testimony of worship and, and what he wants uh, for us to do is is to is to walk with him in this faith expectation that wow what's around the corner what's coming next God mm-hmm. and uh, and not to go oh man I can't I, I'm so fearful of the future I don't know what's going to happen and whew, I'm not sure how I got through this day and 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 that's human nature I mean how does insurance companies sell insurance how do they sell um, um, savings oh the future it's so unknown it's terrible is a million dollars going to be enough to retire on are you kidding me when i was a kid they had a program on and and it was called the millionaire we thought millionaires were huge and now they get into trillionaires are you kidding me i don't even know how many zeros that is after the one but the thing is is we can live today right now jesus said take no thought for tomorrow For sufficient is the evil of this day. In other words, watch where you're walking today. And as you walk where you're you're being shown by God, acknowledging him, he sets up tomorrow. He has us in the right place for tomorrow. So um, what a wonderful, I think, um, segue into where we're going in this Bible study. Okay. And uh, I I, want to start with reading this scripture. This is 1 Peter chapter 3. And uh, verse 18, what a wonderful scripture. It says here, For Christ also died for sins once for all. Now you think about that. Up to that point, all they ever knew was repeated animal sacrifices. Day in, day out. If you blew it, you took a turtle dove. You blew it, you took a a lamb. Uh, Once a year, the high priest would go in and, and kill the the sacrificial perfect cow uh, every year. And hopefully it was accepted by God. If it wasn't, then you had to live with the burden and guilt and weight of that thing. And uh, uh, it, it, that's the way they were thinking in that day and age is, oh, we, we, you know, we'll, we'll have a sacrifice, but then tomorrow and the next day. And, and it was always about the failures of the future. And yet it says here, for Christ also died for sins once for all the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having put been put to death uh, in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. What a wonderful hope that is for us, is that once and for all, we are given a sacrifice that allows us to be drawn to God through Jesus Christ. We're born again. Hallelujah. That's right. And, and the just for the unjust. And so that we are able to come and be alive in the spirit. We are, we are no longer operating in this mindset that says, when I blow it, I'm going to have to have a sacrifice. Better get the, Martha, get the sacrifice together. We know we're going to blow it. And, and we go off on this whole negative thing and tangent of when I blow it again. And, and what God calls us to in his son Jesus is, we operate in love. We operate in this thing that Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's a whole different motivation. It's no longer uh, being intimidated or fearful of, okay, I've got to pay for my sins. But it's now saying I've been set free from sin. The and I am now able to live a life free to honor God, mm-hmm. to, to obey him, to serve him. So, that, so we're no longer focusing on the things of the payments of flesh but we're now living according to the life we have in the spirit spirit. and it's an instant connection right paul said this the letter kills the spirit gives life period that's a that's a great way to say it and so the letter the law of the letter says death 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 you know you blew it you got this and you got to take care of that the spirit says life and so we're able to walk in this wonderful place and and peter in trying to encourage the church was trying to help them to fight against this apprehensive apprehensive fear that, oh no, God's out to get me. 
I did something wrong. No, we're in a battle, folks. We, we are in a battle against the enemy, and it's our job as God's people to enforce the terms of defeat against the enemy in our lives. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for him so that we don't have to put up with the, the trials and temptations the enemy throws at us. We, we don't have to live in fear of saying, oh, God's getting even with me. Yep, I knew this couldn't last. I mean, there was, there's all this fretfulness that we can live in, and God, God doesn't want us to live there. He wants us to live with, God loves me. He loves me so much that he took care of my issue of sin once and for all through his son, Jesus Christ. Well, the love supersedes the legality of the law. And, mm -hmm. you know, with that, I was I was just thinking, OK, um, why does he just say to love and and um, love, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor that that has taken care of everything? And one of the reasons is because when you're operating in love, you will spiritually and naturally do these things that are in the law because the your spirit has been changed, your heart has been changed, you you now operate in a different um, mechanism and a, and a different uh, parameters and and a way of doing things, mode of operation. You're you're in a different mode of operation. You're in God's mode of operation instead of the law and the legality of things. And you will just naturally do it because you want to and not because you're forced to. And that's what I think, you know, there's a difference between the law and, and love with God. <clears throat> the law, you have to do this. You are bound to do this. You're forced to do this. Whereas God... In God, see, He's He's always given you the choice, so it's it's never this pressing and pushing. If you don't do this, this will happen. It it becomes a heart change and a life change and a, a thinking change. Where I just don't want to do it anymore. I know it's it hurts God, and because I love Him, I'm not going to do it because I love Him. Just like when I when you tell me things that <clears throat> you don't like that I'm doing, I change them because I love you, not because I have to, because it's a rule or something mm -hmm. that has been set into place. But it may be something that is a rule, <laughs> you know, that has, mm -hmm. has been set up, but I do it with a different motivation. And that's what this all is about, is a change of our attitudes and our, our motivations. Jesus, it, Jesus peeled back the kingdom of God for people to see. And there was a situation that happened to Jesus and uh, they said, how come you did this? And Jesus said, it would be good for you to learn that I desire mercy rather than sacrifice. And he was trying to help the people to get at the very heart and nature of God. And that is God is love. Mm -hmm. He's holy, but he wants to be known as the God of love. And so as Jesus reveals the kingdom of God and reveals the character of God, he wants us to understand that God's more desirous of of mercy, of loving kindness, rather than letter of the law, you got to do this right here. And and I'm not saying that that negates the law. Uh, what, Jesus, <laughs> what, what Jesus said is uh, the teachers came to him, and this is Matthew 22, 35 through 40, which is what Don was alluding to. One of them, an expert in Moses' teachings, tested Jesus by asking, teacher, which commandment is the greatest in Moses' teaching. So here we are, the letter of the law, the commands. Um, and Jesus answered him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself. And then verse 40 says, All of Moses' teachings and the prophets, what they shared, depend on these two commandments. Love. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And, and everything that we do in our life has to be motivated. If we want to operate in God's kingdom, the most optimum way we can is by love. Mm -hmm. is, is, it's not by the law. And the law constantly ensnares us. And, and I'll give you a good example. Um, we're legalistic in, in so many ways as human beings. If you decide that you are going to go on a diet, 
and you say, okay, I'm going on a diet. I'm going to lose weight. So what shouldn't I eat? Okay. <laughs> starches. Can't eat starches. What should? What else shouldn't I eat? Okay. No, no sugars. Okay. All right. That's a don't. All right. Don't eat starch. Don't eat sugar. And so what do you do when you go on this diet? You, you're preoccupied with, I can't eat starch. I can't eat sugar. What else is there to eat? Well, when Jesus comes in and he loves us, he helps us to grow to the place of saying, you know, now I'm using this metaphorically, you don't need that much sugar. You don't need that much starch. Here, take a look at this. Try eating this. Try eating that. And 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 I'm spiritually speaking, but, but there are so many times when the law focuses us on what we can't do, and Jesus and God's love focuses on what we can do for his kingdom. I want to serve him. I, I don't want to do these things anymore, which you had mentioned earlier. And so what a, what a wonderful opportunity we have today to, to learn about the kingdom of God. That it, it's, it's, not, it's not meat, it's not drink, you know, which, oh, there's so many laws about the food that they could eat, what they couldn't eat. But it's righteousness, it's peace yes. and joy, you know, and joy comes by, by honoring God, is by serving him. So as we get into this study, um, what I want us to do is uh, just to kind of bring us up to speed. There's some of you that maybe are, are uh, not at the place where, where we are in this study. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, we looked at uh, verse uh, question 9, uh, and, and it said, what should we, this is on page 6 of the of the Bible study from Greater Than Gold on First Peter, and we're in chapter 3. It says, uh, question 9, what should we always be ready to do? And uh, the answer in verse 15, always being ready to make a defense or explanation to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope in you with gentleness and reverence or holy fear. And so we're, we're constantly, need, okay, why do I have this hope? And being able to share our God stories with people of why we're so hopeful. Question 10 says, if we have a good conscience because we obey the Lord and have a good testimony, what will happen to men who speak evil of us? They'll be put to shame because they'll, they'll try, to, try to say things about us that just aren't true. And they'll, they'll realize, you know, I'm, I'm just shooting myself in the foot. I don't think I need to say any more. Um, question number 11, write out verse 17 in your own words. And uh, so I basically wrote it, it's better to suffer for doing what God says is right than for suffering because of doing wrong. And um, we need to live with what's right in God's eyes, not in mine. What, what is God saying about this? And uh, one of the best piece of his, uh, pieces of advice that we can give to anybody is what is God saying? What is God saying to you that you need to do? And and then help them to discover what it is that God is saying. Maybe they say, I don't know what he's saying to me. Well, then let's pray right now. Let's let's move into this place of you knowing what this God place. is saying. And many times what God will do, if not all the time, God will use his peace to help us to understand what he wants us to do, the direction he gives us. Praise God. So then we got into um, question 12. Um, by his death on the cross, Jesus once and for all paid the total price of our sins that he might, um, and this is where we led up to, is verse 18. For Christ died, also died for sins once and for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. And because of Jesus' resurrection, he is able to bring us to God. His death, his resurrection, complete. The, the sacrifice was approved by God through Jesus' resurrection. And because of that, he's able to lead us into God's presence. And hallelujah. He some was of, the bridge. <laughs> he was the bridge. And some of our our brothers and sisters, our loved ones have gone before us and, and they are in the very presence of God at this moment and they're waiting for us to be gathered to them so that we all collectively can be in the presence of God and moving into the kingdom of God, the, all that God has for us. And 
I, I've heard arguments, man, I don't know if I want to spend forever just playing a harp sitting on a cloud. Are you that's kidding me? That's, <laughs> that's a human mindset. That's just not true. There's, there is so much. I mean, if you want to see the, the things that God has for us, begin to take a look at creation. Think of the, the amazing pictures that people have taken just recently from these uh, little drone things. I mean, the beautiful symmetry and patterns that are in nature and, and the ability to, to take a picture of animals and the beauty in those animals. I, Even outer space. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Oh, I, there's so That's much right. more that God has for us that we can think of in this human thinking that we have. But it's limited. You know, what you were talking about, though, bringing us to God, um, because God is a spirit, it has to be done in a spirit, in the spirit. So that's why our spirits had to be made alive, because that was the connection in order to bring us to God. Because this flesh is going to die. Yeah, and this flesh isn't, you know, that's not That's what, not us. That's, we can't, he's not, Jesus is no longer here in a in a physical sense, so we cannot... Uh, grasp him and and feel him like a physical person mm -hmm. so that's why he had to open up the way that we could feel him and connect with in him the in, a, in the spirit yeah and and so that's what was made alive when jesus went on the cross and died and the the bridge you know i see this cross with mm -hmm. the bridge from us to god and we were able to walk across the bridge now mm -hmm. to god but it was done in the spiritual sense. And that's what the whole thing with Nicodemus and being made uh, born again, because mm -hmm. our spirits were born and, and revived and made alive again and uh, made alive. And so, you know, that's it, it ties in everything with God is the spirit and they mm -hmm. that worship him must be worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So that's where this connection is and where we are. Um, able now to have this relationship with the Lord. We are able now to receive from him. We are able to hear from him. And a, a lot of the things that he does for us is internal. And, you know, with our spirits, peace, righteousness. It's changing what's happened in, in, in the internal person. Uh, and joy. You know, you can still have joy in the midst of sorrow. And it's, it's kind of a contradictory and a, mm -hmm. and a kind of crazy uh, thought how, what do you mean you can have joy when you're sorrow? Mm -hmm. It's because it's God's joy mm -hmm. and it's a spiritual thing that he's doing in us. And that's, that's why this, this, this scripture is so, so um, living. You know, one of the things that, that we have to realize, and it's hard because the emphasis in this world is always physical things. Yeah. And, um, you know, whether you're young or old, you realize through experience that this flesh begins to age. Yeah. This yeah. flesh <laughs> begins to break down. Change. <laughs> and this flesh is not eternal. It's mm -hmm. temporary. It's and bad. it's it's not immortal. It this flesh will be dust again. And what we have to realize that we are not what we look like in the flesh. We put too much we, emphasis on. We it. do. And what we have to realize is we are who we are by the grace of God living in the spirit. And and there are people that will say, "Pastor, what do you think our bodies will look like?" I, I don't know, but I do know that the Bible gives us some indications that, that you know, we will be like God. We will be like Jesus. We will have bodies that are supernatural, that are spiritual. And, and uh, you know, will we recognize loved ones? Probably. You know, I think that there'll, there'll be that knowing each other by, by the Spirit, you know, and... Uh, um, you know, what will we look like? I don't really know. And we put so much focus and emphasis on yeah. what's going to happen. What am I going to look like? And this, and what we have to realize is God has all of that. And, Covered. and <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking to my son last night and just the nervousness he had about his future and decisions and choices. And boy, I can remember going through that when I was in my early twenties, just 
fretting over what am I going to do and do I have the right situation and am I making the right decision? And if I if I don't get on this path, am I going to be so far off kilter when I'm 60 years old? And, <laughs> and you're past that now. <laughs> I can I can look back. I just had a birthday on on uh, Sunday. Sunday, 69 years old, and I'm able to say, you know, God has this. And I told him, I said, I said, son, realize that God wants you to grow to the point where you can realize that God says, I got this. Don't worry about it. I've got this. And and as I look, in it. I can look over my life many, many times that I've, I've seen God say, I've got this. You're okay. I, I've got this for you. We fretted, but his, then his peace came. Oh, yeah. You know, worry is a lot like sitting in a rocking chair. You expend a lot of energy, but you don't get anywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, worry will do the same thing. I mean, it'll, it'll cause people to become sleepless and worn out and angry and fearful, all because of of worry and and the Bible says that that um, you know when we set our minds on Him, He brings perfect peace. Mm-hmm. And He tells us, uh, Paul writes and says, "Be anxious for nothing, mm-hmm. but in all things, why, by prayer, by supplication, and with thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and uh, and God, who uh, uh, will help us." be protected and guarded, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing here on purpose, is I want you to hear this, is that God's peace will build a fortress around your thoughts so that you can walk through this thing, that you can handle it. His peace that overcomes and any understanding that we have. I, I, I'm speaking to somebody right now. Any understanding you have, God's peace is better than that understanding and helping you to grow to the place of realizing God says, I've got that. Don't worry about it. It's a wonderful place to be able to, in your spirit, hear God say, I've got that. Don't worry about it. And then feel his peace. The the scripture that um, Harry was just saying, is Philippians 4, um, 6. It says, never worry about anything, but in every situation, let God know what you need in prayers and requests while giving thanks. That's what he was just talking mm-hmm. about. And then verse 7 says, then the p- God's peace, which goes beyond anything we can imagine. So it's not... A any of our thinking. Thinking. Yeah. Any of our considerations. Will guard your thoughts. It comes in and it starts to put a um, like a... a a shield or a, a armor up against it. So it's going to guard your thoughts and your emotions. So the thoughts, the, the mind and the emotions through Christ Jesus. Yeah, and and that, it comes supernaturally. That that word guard your, your thoughts, guard your mind, that word in the Greek is garrison. And it, it basically means being surrounded by an army. That's what it means. And God's peace will surround your mind like an army you know where the enemy won't be able to get to you because you're protected by this army of god's peace and it's it's a wonderful place to be where we see god's hand upon us and we rest in that even even though we struggle you you know i i really appreciate the song in habakkuk it says though the fig tree does not blossom and there be no fruit uh, on, the vine. on the vine, though the produce. produce of the olive fail and there be no uh, um, flocks in the stall, uh, it goes on, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And and here was the prophet Habakkuk saying, you know, all of these crummy things may be happening. We might not be able to see uh, where we can rub two nickels together but we're going to trust the Lord and we're going to joy in the God of our salvation. And there are times when God simply calls us to enjoy him and, and, and for him to be able to say, I've got this, watch what I'll do in this situation. Wait and see. Wait Whatever and see. it is you're going through right now, I, I just want to encourage you that God is saying, I got this, watch what I can do in this situation. He really will take care of you. He really will. I, we could spend three hours right now talking about all the things that Don and I have experienced together and individually where God has kept us and helped us to walk through 
life, um, so many things. Um, and if you want to know, buy me a cup of coffee and we can sit for two or three hours and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> well, our time is up. And so what we want to do is we want to take time to pray. And uh, we didn't get very far, um, okay. but we talked it about the cool. things that we talked about the things that God wanted us to talk about today, because there, there are people that are watching or will watch that need to hear this. We really believe, we pray that way before we start recording that we'll be a conduit for what God wants to say and not allow anything to, to you know, uh, cause us to, to go into our own agenda. So um, do you have any closing thoughts? No, okay. <laughs> I'll let you close. <laughs> are you sure? Right. Do you want to pray? No, I'll let you. Please. Okay. All right. Well, Father, thank you so much for this time. And thank you for speaking to our hearts and through our hearts. And hopefully, Lord, the things that we've said have been the things that you wanted said. And we pray for those individuals that you're speaking to right now, Lord. Help them, guide them. Uh, may they understand, Lord, that they can rest in who you are and what you've done for them. Mm -hmm. And Lord, uh, I pray if they're struggling with the flesh that, that Lord, they would realize that the more they focus on what they shouldn't do, um, they're going to become preoccupied with it. So help them to focus on the things that you want them to do so that they can move away from those things that are legalities and move into a life of walking in the spirit, wanting to, to obey you, to love you and serve you. Help them, oh God, to be victorious in that. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, I wanted to encourage you that we have gone back to one uh, Sunday morning service at 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we invite you to come and join us for that. Uh, we also have uh, children's ministry, and we have nursery now that has started up. And so uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you in the flesh, uh, if you can join us. And uh, for those that aren't able to, that are watching from a, a distance where maybe in another state or whatever, uh, we thank you so much for joining with us. And, and thank you for the comments. A lot of times we see them um, after uh, the recording has played, but a lot of times we watch with the recording and try to try to give comments as well. Can't just uh, <laughs> No, we can't because we'll be at the Bible study. So Pastor David will take care of that for us. And, <laughs> And uh, But we thank you for the comments and appreciate so much your prayers and love for us. And uh, we will see you next Wednesday, Lord willing, at 1030. And uh, you have a good rest of the week. God bless you. Bye-bye.